All right, let's do let's do a soft a soft a soft clap and a baby sound. Hey, what's up, everybody? How you doing? My name's Hero. This is Calling with Strangers, and I wanna talk about something nice. Oh yeah, I wanna talk about something I seen on the news. You know. I'm a big component of evolution, push the, push it forward, make things better. Um, I, I like to see things thrive. But um, when we get to a crossroad in life where AI is being suggested for some of the dumbest things, you got to pump your brakes and start calling people stupid. We have to start publicly shaming people. We need to bring back public shaming. Whenever someone says something dumb, we need to have the capacity, not in a cruel or obscene amount of it. We just want to be able to identify as a collective unit that this person right now, right here, is saying something dumb. <laughs> it's like when you see a cyber truck on the road. It just, boo, why are you doing this? <laughs> Could you imagine paying $100,000 for a, a truck that del when, upon delivery doesn't work? That's wild. That's absolutely wild. Um, the thing that we want to talk about today, I have three stories in particular that we're going to run through that talk about how AI could have made things better. And it's just, and I want, I want these people to know I think they're dumb. So let's just get into it. How AI could have prevented the key bridge collapse. For all you guys that don't know, the key bridge is located in Baltimore, Maryland. Uh, it is the ninth biggest port of in, import and export for the United States. It mostly deals with vehicles, uh, uh, hardware and materials for farming, vehicles, and et cetera, et cetera. And it's the ninth biggest port in America. The key, uh, the, the boat in question has had two total accidents, including this one. The first one was in 2016, and the most recent one was this one. Now, there's a bunch of conspiracy theories about this boat. Like, for example, the bridge hit the like, and this 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 incident really gave people a chance to expose their level of brain rot, right? Because whether it was from the boat crashed into the bridge because of aliens, because it was on the path of totality uh, for the eclipse, or uh, you know, DEI initiatives like. The boat's from Singapore. The cargo ship is from Singapore, but it's the DEI initiatives in Baltimore that caused this accident. This 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 lays to rest a lot of the concerns I had growing up about how the Titanic ended up in the situation it did. Uh, but when it comes straight down to it, a lot of people have their opinions about this. But the fact that somebody out there, and luckily for them, they put this as an opinion piece, thinks that... Uh, AI could have prevented the bridge collapse is mind boggling because in order for you to have this thought that that lets me know that you probably don't know why the, the cargo ship stopped working. So let's find out real quick. Today is April Fool's Day, but I, it is no laughing matter. So this is back in April Fool's Day. Imagine if that was like the whole point of this and then it was just a flip on itself. But after I read that and he continued to be serious, that's why I decided to let him have it. The U.S. is dealing with one of the most expensive accidents in history. On March 26, a container ship lost power, keyword, lost power, several times and hit uh, the Francis Scott Key Bridge with two pilots on board. Uh, lives were lost and the estimated to, it's estimated to take $400 million and possibly a decade to rebuild. I have had a lot of experience on the water. <laughs> I taught myself to sail at the age of 12. All right, we're starting to get a little bit of the pretentiousness. He had enough. His, he wasn't a middle-class kid. Uh, worked on the harbor uh, patrol as both enforcement and fire and trained to race 17-meter boats. The largest I have helmed was a 450-foot freight to um, Mercrossan. I wasn't that good at it. Okay, I don't know what this is. What's this? I have this new thing that tells me what words are. Micronesia. 
Micronesian? Cool. Uh, we could have avoided last week's disaster if the port had been properly automated and run by AI. Let's walk through how we might have used AI to prevent this disaster. Why AI is potentially, uh, potentially much safer for ports of all types and why it's critical for being for, uh, for uh, critical, we begin to use AI tools more aggressively to have better chances of preventing this kind of catastrophe and outcome. Okay, using AI to prevent another bridge catastrophe. While we will likely spend much of our post collision efforts looking for people to blame, in my world, the work should initially be to both understand the problem and immediately move to preventing its reoccurrence. The issue appears to be that the cause of the problem wasn't identified in a timely manner. This is not true. At the moment of the first impact, which was exactly 12 minutes uh, before, 12 minutes before impact, the first, the, the first SOS call went out for them to clear the bridge. Two police officers who were already northbound and southbound on the bridge started directing traffic and stopped them from going off. The, the heroes of this situation from it being more catastrophic and no and we'll keep in mind that six people did lose their life on the bridge working on the bridge that still doesn't stop the fact that the most the only thing that could have happened happened even if there was an opportunity for tugboats or anything like that to get out in advance of it, the tugboats wouldn't be able to get out ahead of it without first getting notification and as far as i'm concerned there's no way a to uh even if you had 10 tugboats, they could have stopped this boat from happening. There's no level of AI that stopped this. There's, there's literally just bad infrastructure. And the fact that these boats and these containers aren't maintained properly. But for this jack wagon to think that uh, AI signal could have been sent at the speed of light and return back and still get people to move at the speed of light is the problem with this sentiment. There's no situation where something that literally moves with the with the force of 400 400,000 pounds of force per square inch or whatever is going to be stopped within 12 minutes of anything but if you want to say ai for detection before you talk about detection we have to talk about utility if our utilities aren't being properly maintained then this is mindless uh it's like trying to it's, the ai is a band-aid in this situation the situation is Poor infrastructure, poor utilities, and not enough regulation around these types of things. To think that though that bridge didn't have buoy braces, which are designed to in, uh, absorb the impact of oncoming things, is crazy because the bridge has been up for almost 30 years. And also that the thought of renovating or making a secondary bridge was out of the question is also another thing. So, miss me with that shit, right? But, okay, here... This is a, this is a one-off story. This is his opinion. He has experience. He was twelve years old. He he got on a boat. He was a pirate king or some shit like that. Okay, cool. Might Nvidia be the first company with an AI CEO? <laughs> As it is typically the case when a, one company jumps ahead of uh, the others. Analytically, uh, analysts like me get asked, "What makes Nvidia so much more successful than its peers?" While my peers may have different answers, I think there is one predominant cause for this success. NVIDIA CEO Jensen Hong Hong has had three clear advantages that most other CEOs lack. First, Hong technically uh, allows him to set ex and execute a vision. Second, Hong is a founder which typically grants unusual loyalty and power over the company. And finally, he is the longest serving tech CEO in recent history, which is which all great accolades for him, right? Uh, I say recent history because NVIDIA is around 30 years old. IBM's first CEO and founder, Thomas Watson, served for 42 years during the time when IBM pretty much was the tech industry and was even more successful than NVIDIA is now. All right, get to the thing. Why the CEO is broken, the overcompensation problem. CEOs are overcompensated. So the gist of this story is they're saying CEOs, they should only be board members that then control a, a, a AI to handle making decisions. But 
uh, one of the reasons why getting rid of CEOs would probably be, this is more of a tale about getting rid of CEOs, but AI is it the way to do this. Um, CEOs are overcompensated and this creates significant financial and operational problems in both public and private companies. CEOs weren't always the highest paid position. When I first entered the tech field, one of my jobs was managing compensation and some of the sales reps made significantly more than the founding CEO. Granted, the founders had founder stocks, which eventually raised the CEO compensation when that stock was sold. But unlike today's CEO, compensation was massively higher uh, than that of, uh, of other executives. Today, CEOs are overcompensated, and that leads to three big problems. Disparity in creativity, the CEO is motivated to acquire versus uh, managing, and the overall compensation can convoy a feeling that the CEO can do whatever they want. So those are the three major topics. Uh, the thing about it is, you want to know something that's crazy? People... <laughs> Solution AI 500% makes sense. This is crazy because their their thought process is oh I if instead of us to just you know maybe reframe or restructure how the CEO structure is made because because CEOs are paid in five year lump sums and in those five years they have to make the most returns as possible for their stakeholders as to get their final paycheck at the end of the day. If you see a CEO who's not making massive returns in their first year, second year, they're out if they haven't picked up the pace. So the position of CEO used to be for pushing innovation or pushing ideas, but in large part, it has evolved into, it has evolved into doing whatever works to get your stakeholders happy. And I don't know about you, but if you've ever used ChatGPT, just go on there and ask it some obscure questions or some very technical questions and watch how quickly it devolves from it just wanting to get you the best answer to it just wanting to give you an answer. We already know ChatGPT lies and will fabricate information to make things true. Why do we think we could program a CEO out of AI when we can't even get AI to recognize Asian people in pictures? Right. We're relying way too much on this. And just like the last story, this story could easily be solved if we just had more human connections about and more human realistic expectations of the boundaries capable. There's no way you could have stopped that boat. The Mayday was the best we had. And the prior things we could have done in the beginning could have uh, helped us do this. The CEOs being charged not with only getting the highest price for what they can but also maintaining a company-wide morale if you put that as high as you put money i guarantee you ceos would operate differently but ceos don't get paid bonuses for happy employees they get paid bonuses for high revenue turnout right there was one more dumb thing uh, I wanted to talk about this. They and they because they brought up Devin. Nvidia created a concept of digital humans. You want to know why they're so prompt about making human beings replacing? Because this Devin isn't going to replace uh, a a CEO. Devin's going to replace yo yo ass. And we need to stop engineering ourselves out of positions. Today they are built mainly for sales and customer support, but they have evolved into replacements for almost any job. For instance, Cognitive Labs just launched their first AI software engineer called Devin, which can automate uh, autonomous, autonomously write apps. This is complete bullshit. Like, <laughs> the benchmark for it answering questions correctly on GitHub is 14%. And they're just like, yeah, it's, it's good to go. It's good to go, guys. Hey. Hey, you, hero, why are you programming? Why, why are you coding with strangers? You're not going to need to code with anybody. It's crazy how this, this, this VC money has got people lying, has got people lying off the ass. Um, but this is not the, the true to tell. And, and just to be clear, remember, this is an opinion piece, a story that they wrote. They used AI for this image. And I just want to bring it to your attention. The CEO in this picture doesn't have hands. 
Um, the keyboard doesn't have keys. Uh, the man in the corner right here, he also doesn't have hands. In fact, his cufflinks, his white sh collar shirt extends to his palms. The lady here doesn't have a knot connecting her ponytail to her head and her collar to her neck doesn't seem to happen. And it seems like the front of her ponytail is in front while the hair is behind. She also doesn't have hands. Like I said, the benchmark for knowing if AI is working is I need to see Will Smith eat spaghetti in the most realest form possible. Also, the two water bottles have handles because they're not sure if it's supposed to be a coffee cup or water bottles. These are AR overlords. They can't make a picture of an office. New wireless tech helps service dogs combat veteran PTSD. This is crazy. All right. A service dog company will announce new technology this week that enables trained canines to perform tasks such as tamping down anxiety and interrupting nightmares after receiving wireless alerts. Called Canine Alert, the technology is designed to, in, in, to be integrated with service dogs training to, the, to help mitigate trauma-related nightmares like those of military veterans suffering from post-traumatic stress syndrome, PTSD, According to information provided to Tech News World by K9 by K9 Company. And I also had to check the date on this to make sure it wasn't April Fool's Day because that's wild. So you mean to tell me a dog that has already been trained to identify when their their owners are having a panic attack, anxiety attack, or nightmares is now going to have to wait for a light or a bell to go off to be like Okay, yeah, he's having a panic attack. This is something called uh, iPad syndrome. And in the healthcare uh, world, we see this a lot with new nurses and new doctors. When new nurses and new doctors come onto the floor for the first time, because they were trained on their iPad, anytime there's a problem, the first thing they do is look on their iPad at their notes. And we spend the next two to three years breaking that habit so that the first thing they do is look at the patient. And I kid you not, we had a patient who had passed away and we brought in a team of first year residents to examine the body. And I just wanted to ascertain their level of competency. But believe me when I tell you, two of the people there, two of the students could not readily identify that this patient had passed away. Even if I'm talking to you right now, you could pull from your ass a memory of a video, whether it was Scrubs, Grey's Anatomy, some firefighter show, of how they check to see if someone's alive. And the first thing they do is check for a pulse. But besides the fact that we had cameras and monitors all reading zero, these, these big brains started looking into their iPads to try and figure out what was causing this patient's uh, ailments, to which I reminded them, uh, the reason why this person was having a uh, significant illness is because their heart stopped. Yeah, it's called cardiac arrest. This is just another way of squeezing money out of situations. And it's kind of disgusting because this is actually something that there are veterans who are suffering from right now. And this technology, this addition doesn't make the situation better for people who don't have it. And that is what we call uh, a, a nuisance. In the, in, in the grand scheme of things, because we want technology to truly advance and push our way of life forward and make it more accessible and able for more people. But when we have situations where it's just being used to squeeze money out of an already broken system, it just is an utter nuisance. And you can spin this however you want, but the truth of the matter is if you find yourself having to rely on these tactics to make a play or make us believe that AI is here to stay or this technology is actually going to change the game, I can tell you right now, there's a strong likelihood that it's probably not going to have the impact that we all, that uh, all these people think and that this is, and this is just what it is. A lot of people pushing AI in the fronts of our minds because they know that their investors won't be happy unless is being talked about. So this is something 
whether it's, we're not really sure, is it the dog wagging the tail or the tail dag, wag, uh, wagging the dog? Uh, it's kind of interesting to think about, like how this, how people's perception of technology really push us. If you could think back to the NFT craze, like that dude is going to jail. <laughs> the dude that was talking about all those NFTs and stuff like that, FTX, he's going to jail. And three years ago, you couldn't tell me that that dude wasn't one of the uh, up and coming stars in tech. And he's going to be serving, I think, 40 years behind bars. But that's just my opinion on it. Clap it. I just want to know what you think about it. Uh, I put asked the question in the last video Get down. that, you know, what do y'all want to know about AI? I'm very curious to know what y'all think about this. Do you think AI is going to have the effect of this? Like, share, comment, subscribe. I like you. I love you. I want some more of it. <laughs>